Hello, Robert Davis here. Happy Tuesday to you, or whatever day it is where you're at. Um, it's 2.05 a.m. here, Tuesday morning. And I wanted to revisit the calculation of age between two dates and give you an example of the difference between the last tutorial and this one. So let's open this up. I had a requirement to calculate age at, at death for a genealogy program I wrote for my sister who collected deceased dates as well as pretty much every other date you can imagine a person's got. So it's mostly cosmetic. There isn't a lot of code involved in this very little. So we have this main form. We have these edits, DB Navigator. We have the ADO connection to our database, the table of that database, and the data source, which ties up all these database control items on the form. And then where we make our money is the get age at death button that's where it does the work so let's just see how this works we've got the record up we have the date of birth and deceased date all we need to do is click this button and we get the age at death of 59.6 do another one age at death 72.5 one more 14 years old that was a cousin of mine who died all too young. So anyway, let's look at the code that's assigned to this button event, click event. And right here is button one click. And we declare a variable age at death, which is a double and it has to be. So you can format the float. And then age at death, we load with the deceased date minus the date of birth divided by this number here which gives you the exact date of death and then we just simply show the message age of death colon concatenated to the float to string f function loaded with age of death it's a number give you six digits to the left and one digit to the right so you can tell approximately what part of the year from the decimal point number. And that's really all there is to it. This is just regular routine maintenance stuff, closing the database before you terminate the application. And when you create a form, opening the connection and then opening the table. And the data source binds that all to the data controls. So one more look. Let's see, I'm running down the street here. 48, age of death is 48. Now you notice this date of birth and the deceased date are both on one one. So it's gonna give you the exact number of years, no decimal point because they're both one one. But you go up here, and you have a different month of day than this one. So you get a decimal number of six, which means he was 59 and a half, or approximately 59 and a half. So that's all there is to it. You can use, it doesn't have to be the date of death here. It could be college graduation date. It could be, anniversary date, any any kind of date that's going to be later than their date of birth. And so there you have it. Uh, it doesn't get a whole lot easier than that, but if you've never done it before, getting this float to string set up just exactly how it should be can be a little challenging if you've never done it. So that's all there is to that, and I'm going to see you in the next tutorial, which I hope will be soon, 
and if you like this please like it and if you want notifications of the very next tutorials or announcements come out click the subscribe and the notification bell you'll get notified when a new tutorial is posted or an announcement comes out so thanks for taking the time with me again I'm Robert Davis and I'll see you in the next tutorial so thank you bye